So, we need to talk. There was a video I made years ago about gang stalking. And I didn't want to make any more videos on it, but I was just recommended a video on YouTube. And I was like, what the fuck is this? So, I clicked on this, and I'm like, okay, these numbers weren't significant, because when I clicked on it, it was pretty close to that, okay? It was like 320. And I've been listening to it, and I was just kind of meditating, trying to get the vibe of this video, and like, channel, and like, what's going on. And then, I came back halfway through, and I'm like, okay, let me see, like, <laughs> what exactly was listed because I went down here like this for just a few minutes and I'm like okay like I didn't really look through it right I like skimmed over it and I'm like those are a lot of things I don't want to be reading and paying attention to so and I'm like wait halfway through the video meditating I'm like this, this there's something here I'm not paying attention to so I came back here because I, I was having memories of where I was born in the Middle East and what happened there that we had to leave one of my earliest memories there is of hearing a war siren, like an air raid siren. I was about two years old and it went off and whenever those went off, we were, you know, my, everybody was supposed to go outside and like, I don't know, it was weird back then. It was 1981 and, or 1982 almost. My mom grabbed my hand, we went outside to look to see what was going on, and God, the floor was so hot. It was so hot, like the, the ground outside, I didn't have my shoes on. And a fighter jet plane flew right over our head on the middle of the street, like we were standing in the middle of the street looking up to see what was going on, because it was an air raid siren, we were looking for jets. That's what she kept saying to me, like, when she, when she would tell me the story. And from what I remember, we went outside and she was holding me and she was looking up at jets. And we saw a few of them go in different directions and then one of them went right over the road we were standing in, above our head, like, not directly above our heads, but I mean like in the middle of the road. So like, if this is the road, we're standing right there. The jet went like that, right over towards the distance on that way. And there was a rainbow off in the distance. And the freaking jet dropped a bomb if, like blocks and blocks away like almost a mile or two away and it went through the rainbow made a double rainbow and the shock wave went this way and my mom grabbed me we ran back into the house that's the day I remember all of them in that house and they were all talking about how we're going to leave so when I had this memory pop up it like startled me to come back here to read this. I'm like, okay, so let's read what all these effects of being a targeted individual actually are, because I've heard this mentioned so much. I've done so much, like, not really research, but the interviews I've watched with a lot of, like, whistleblower people and etc. Like, I had a pretty good idea of what it was about. But I didn't know the, the details, the checklists, the, you know, the alphabet soup agency documents that were released. I didn't know about all that stuff. So I'm looking at these. Okay. And remember, it's all energy. It's all consciousness having an idea, which means these energies are an aspect of consciousness itself being utilized against consciousness itself by aspects of consciousness itself. So the universe pretending to be different people to do this to itself, okay? We're aware of that, but in the physical 3D world, this fucking sucks. So amplified destructive habits. That means even if you like you you have a sugar addiction, you're gonna be on a fucking sugar addiction for no fucking reason, and it's gonna seem normal to you. Dementia. Nothing's gonna fucking make sense to you. How is that going to benefit you though, right? It leads you to a different path. Amplified destructive habits. How does this benefit you? Because you're in a world of duality. It helps you have better willpower. Gang stalking. I didn't really know much about this until I realized there's an actual mathematical and sequence and protocol to this. 5,000 to every targeted individual. So 5,000 people at the least in your life are being paid to fuck you over. 
street theater, shit happening on the street, and where you're walking to the store, at the gas station, anything, but it's not real. It's literally people being paid, sent messages through cell phones to come and do shit to get emotional responses out of you. Electronic harassment and torture. So let's say you're going to YouTube and you're like opening a new tab. <clears throat> Suddenly all the thumbnails look like they're fucking insulting you, they're attacking you, they're like showing you horrible images, and then boom, they're all suddenly switched back to normal, and you thought, wait a minute, what the fuck was that? That's just one method. Another method is Facebook. And let me show you, my dear. I just had somebody message me. He's been messaging me for fucking days. This isn't the only one. I'd show you the rest, but there's some, like, family members that have messaged me on Facebook. I've had at least, um, eight offers to be married, to be fucked, to be, like, taken away, to be, you know, fill in the blank. by people from all over the world, supposedly. Voice to whatever. So those people who think they're channeling entities, they're not. They're channeling some fat guy named Bob sitting at an office desk. Loss of hair and teeth. Your body is not designed to lose those. It's not. If you're having hair, like hair issues or teeth issues, that's why. It's not because of what you're eating. Jesus himself said it doesn't matter what you put in your mouth. Body mutilation and muscle spasms. How much was I telling, talking to you about my toe cramps and like I couldn't breathe for a while and how I was having these like weird twitches. Even when I was with a Leo, he noticed these. Burns on the back of the head, neck, anywhere on the body. Yep, I've had those as well. Heart attack, stroke, increased arrhythmia had tons of those as well and I keep coming back brain fog yup schizophrenia yup bipolar panic hysteria yup increased isolation dysfunction in social groups yep stalkins break-ins gaslighting increased paranoia yep these are things I experience every day okay I don't tell you the this stuff because I don't want to keep bringing it into into reality, but this is shit I experience every single day, and not in a normal way. Like it's very obvious to me that these things aren't mine. I'm very well aware of energy and channeling and and entities and what's from source and what isn't and in what aspect of source it's coming from. But in the human version of me, the human body version of me, I experience. All of this, all of this, I hear gunshots every fucking night. This like voice of God, voice of the devil in the head, I, I hear that a lot and that's how I trigger it in the other way. It's like I've learned to backfire a lot of this. So that's why I'm finally making this video to tell you this. Because everything they were doing to fuck with me has somehow benefited me. I mean, I've been to a doctor a thousand fucking times about my teeth, about everything that's been going on with my body. They're like, we have no answer for you. We don't know why this is happening. But teeth literally have had been breaking out of my mouth. Like, just bloop, breaking, chipping as I'm biting bread. For no reason. <clears throat> I've had the weirdest fucking insects up here. The weirdest. Like, I've... The strangest insects. So, I don't know who is in charge of any of this stuff. I don't know what the fuck, like, any of this is really in the real world. I barely spend my time in the real world. I don't get involved in any politics. I have no idea what the fuck is going on in the world. I had, I think the last time I even caught the news was at my parents' house because the news was on the on the TV that my dad was watching. 
I, I don't know, like, the only reason I even know about any kind of a virus in the world is because there were, like, signs out there. And then the, th the thing, in, back in March with that video I made, I think my sister was telling me back then, like, oh, this is going on, haven't you seen the news? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? So, if you guys have any suggestion on what people can do about this, post it in the comments, not just for me, but for everybody. Because I can pretty much guarantee you that if you research any of this for yourself and you look at the symptoms, every single problem in your life can be associated with energetic weapons and other psychics. Before it ever gets into the energetic spiritual world, there are, there are things happening to you in the physical. Our point of life here isn't to leave the physical. It's to bring heaven to earth, right? Not just a religious heaven, but our kingdom, our Malkuth, our Malkuta. We're supposed to be bringing it here. We're not supposed to come here and then wither away and die and then leave, you know, leave it for the next generation. All the while having our, you know, reproductive systems fucked with so that there won't be next generations. Who do you think gets left with everything? Think about it. We're all intelligent beings, right? We're all aware that the things that happen to the body aren't natural. We're all aware that energy and dimensions and frequencies exist, and we are all aware that there are people in the world who do really fucked up things. And they think it's okay. So... There is no rationalizing with people like that. To them, it's a job. I was watching this card reading the other day. And I think, I don't, I'm not going to mention the name. But she mentioned something about how And no, it's nobody that I've seen, but like I've mentioned before on this channel at all. Like it was just another recommended video that came up and I clicked it from somebody completely different, like completely out of my energetic sphere of everything that I, I like usually watch on YouTube. And she said something about the devil energy and how doesn't even get pleasure from doing what it's doing. It's just doing its job. It's a function of God. It's a, it's a feature. The accuser is just doing its job. It doesn't care if you win or lose. It doesn't get any emotional response from it. It can't. If it would get emotional responses from it that were authentic, it wouldn't do what it's doing. Therefore, it is mindless, irrational, emotionless, like emotional void of behavior. That's why we view it as evil. It has no life in it. If you put evil backwards, it's live. It is the opposite of living. Therefore, it cannot have a point of consciousness to be able to do horrible things, right? Therefore, it's just a feature. It is a function. It's like turning a power switch on. It, it, the switch isn't evil or good. It doesn't, it's not evil for, you know, turning off and taking the light bulb, you know, out of the equation of light. And it's not good for turning, you know, the light bulb on. It's just the switch. So all of this stuff that's been going on since 1980 in my life, and God knows for how long before that I was even born with their looking glass technology, like, who knew, like, you know, I was coming beforehand to do all this stuff throughout my entire family. And then to set up an entire thing where I moved across the fucking world from place to place to place to place to place and then isolated in a fucking racing Wisconsin. Are you kidding me? And then, like, everything I've been doing, like, makes no difference. Being stuck in a fucking loop, having all of these fucking symptoms, having every single one of these things listed, done to me, repeatedly, every day. And to me, it's been normal. Because it's been my entire life. Like, I have had no basis of a normal reality. 
to tell you guys, oh, <clears throat> I can just go to the beach and do something. No, bitch, I can't go anywhere. I go outside and I get street theater. I stay inside. I got people banging on my fucking walls from all directions. I got, like, ins random insects fucking crawling under my door from people who were standing there digging shit out of their pocket. I, like, stood there watching them out of the peephole. Like, and this entire time I've thought these people are just ill, they're not okay, blah blah blah, and I've, I've literally gone through life thinking this is a part of my normal life. That I'm just here doing karma, clearing karmic work. I've looked at it all spiritually. But looking at it physically, in a three-dimensional, physical, tangible world experience of what my being is experiencing every single day, this fucking sucks. And then to go to, like, you know, have, try to form communities online or to have friendships online, it doesn't fucking work. Majority of you are exactly who you are. And if you aren't, then you, you are learning about this and you should be aware of the people in your life. Majority of them aren't who they claim to be. The way that I've really comprehended this is my entire life has basically been an experiment to be experimented on. But why would my consciousness agree to that, right? Think about it. You're, you're a, a fractal of consciousness encased in, in, a, in a body. And it, wouldn't you want like somebody experimenting on you without you knowing that you're being experimented on to know exactly what your limitations are? Wouldn't you want to be scienced? I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to think I could fly and I would run around and close my eyes and like feel like I'm flying and then open them and I'd be somewhere, you know, farther down the block. And I remember in freshman year of high school, I would talk to my friends there and I'd be like, it would be really cool to have like a, a, a an intelligent scientist that could like figure out what, what we can do as humans. Because we would be talking about like magic and witchcraft and like the movie The Craft was coming out and there were like X-Men comics and Fantastic Four. It was like 1993, 1994. It was awesome. But even then, like, I wanted to know. So I'm not like saying, oh, I've been victimized by all this shit. No, Brit, no, 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 no. Some part of me welcomed it. So I can't be like, oh, I fucking hate these people for doing this. I'm actually really grateful for them for doing this. They have woken a fucking goddess up inside me. And she isn't angry. One bit. I want to know more. Where's all the records of everything that's been done? Where's all the information? Where's all the resources that were gained from, from all of the suffering I've been through? What am I capable of? Who am I and what am I doing here? And why am I doing it here? Who else would know other than the people who have been fucking with me my entire life? Right? Think about it. Think about it with some fucking evil genius. You have an evil genius in your life. Your consciousness has an evil genius aspect to it. And it's been doing this to you in the physical world through the form of other people. You can't hate them. You can't hate yourself and you cannot feel victimized. So if this is happening to you, thank it. It has shown you something inside of you. Now what do we do about it? Alright, what do we do about it? If you're like in the X-Men team and you're being tested to see the limits and extents of your power, and it's, it's having all these negative effects on you, what are we going to do? Do we keep pushing to see how far, like, before you implode? Or do we stop and then take a break and do it again later? Because in your reality, you create your reality. So some of you, some of us, have created this. What do we do next? Because some of us are really powerful psychics. Some of us are really superhuman. Some of us aren't even human. So we have this entire collective of beings who are um, not supernatural, not paranormal, not super soldier, but like a different strain, a different color of the human. 
So what are we supposed to do? Because all of this stuff, and I'm still here, 40 years later, 40 years of constant torture like this, basically. 40 years. I have not known a real life. I have not known a real gender. I have not known real love. I have not known real success. I have not even known more than $900 a month my entire life. I have not known health or well-being. I have not known companionship or true friendship. I have not known true love. My mother did not even fucking hug me until I was 36. Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. My life has been fucked with, and it hasn't just been my life. Like, people in my family have been messed with. People in my family have been used to mess with us. People in your families, like my neighbors. My, one of my neighbors came in, to, came in the other day and fucking threatened to kill me and, like, and do horrible things to me. And I'm like, are you serious right now? She's like, you know what? I'm gonna go. Never mind. Forget I said anything. I'm like, what the fuck was that about? And then, like, the random other things that keep happening each day, like the, the neighbor that keeps going outside and punching the cars when I'm sleeping, and she only does it when I'm sleeping. Like, only. And then my sleeping hours are really fucked up. Like, how would she even know? And she always does it right outside my window. Right underneath my window. I've shown you this. Like, I, I don't, I don't even know, like, even the, the stuff that happened, that happened with my previous partner, none of that was normal, none of that was twin flamey, none of that was karmic, like, we can put any tag we want on it, but in reality, somebody stole my fucking life and took off with it, they spent eight years with me and they kept a book of checks and balances the entire time, and none of the relationship was real, and at the end of it, he stole my keys with his mom and locked me out kept everything I had and then gave me garbage bags and boxes of shit he didn't want to keep and then disappeared so I mean it was just a job to him it wasn't even a, a relationship and all this time I've you know it took me three fucking years of <clears throat> going through all of this to get here and see this three years later and be like oh this would have made a lot more sense had I known this back then. You know? But now I'm listed as somebody with like clinical post complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which is like a, <laughs> a lifetime of sustained trauma, perpetually. Every day, every experience being traumatic. Every single thing. Why is it traumatic? Because there are brief moments like these little splits, just like in your own life. Trauma, peace, trauma, peace, trauma, peace, trauma, peace, trauma, peace, trauma, peace, trauma, peace. Here you go, just kidding. 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 A constant fucking mind game. And then to be in, in a part of reality where people are like, oh, it's a matrix, it's a construct, it's not even real. No, bitch, it's fucking real. It's real. You cut yourself, you bleed, it's real. Don't fucking say the matrix isn't real. You're in it, you're experiencing it. It's real. Even if it's just for 18-hour increments or however long you stay awake. It's real when you're here. Get over it and fucking deal with it and fix it. Now, instead of looking at it like a victim, we're going to look at it as a badass warrior queen or warrior king. What do you do with all this shit? You're in a fucking science experiment that you didn't consciously sign up for and you're being tested on all of this stuff. You can look at it as a fucking little pussy sitting in a chair screaming or you can look at it as a badass warrior being like, alright, what else you got? Let's choose the warrior side, okay? The light the dark, the balance of the both. Now, neural network negative reprogramming. What does this teach you? How to reprogram yourself positively. Loss of sleep, sleep, or loss of sleep, loss of work. What does that teach you? 
how to be far more efficient. Cancer, what does that teach you? How to love your body more. Long-term stress, disease, and decay, what, is, what has this taught me? How to really take care of the human body far more efficiently than I've ever thought I needed to. Bioamplification, radar torture, and kill ratio statistics, what does this teach you? Energy manipulation, what does covert telepathic messages teach you? How to communicate telepathically. What does active mass shooter drills teach you? How to not be afraid of any human being outside anywhere, even if they look like they're fucking running around shooting people. You walk right past them. Never run from anything immortal. Multiple personalities, what does that teach you? How to love yourself in every fucking way. Belief system hacking, delusions, what does that teach you? None of it matters. RFID tracking chips, what does that teach you? Well, you're never going to get lost, are you? Someone's always going to know where you are. So there's no fear of ever being lost anywhere. Or kidnapped. Bipolar, panic, and hysteria, what does that teach you? How to harness every single emotional state you can ever experience, regardless of what your mindset or emotional state or physical state is. You are in full control of your emotional capacities. Increased isolation, dysfunction, and social groups. What does that teach you? How to be fucking unique. Stalking, break-ins, gaslighting, increased paranoia. What does that teach you? How to control yourself, your emotions, your body, your fear. Brain fog. What does that teach you? To be in the present moment. Schizophrenia, what does that teach you? To hear everything and make absolutely no judgment. And to be consciously, lucidly aware of the present moment. Heart attack, stroke, arrhythmia, blah blah blah, what does that teach you? How to manage your heart rate, consciously, every beat. Burns on the back of the head, neck, anywhere on the body, what does that teach you? How to heal the skin and the muscles and the tissues and the nerves, with herbs. Body mutilation and muscle spasms. What does that teach you? How to control every muscle in your body. <clears throat> Loss of hair and teeth. What does that teach you? The importance of all the nutrients that go within the body. Voice to whatever. What does that teach you? How to harness every fucking mental communication and audible communication you hear and to discern what's real and what isn't. Electronic harassment and torture, what does that teach you? That nothing in this screen is real. Nothing. Street theater, what does that teach you? That nothing outside is real. Except you. So you be real. And let the other ones play the role. You walk around the world like you fucking own it. Dementia and gang stalking, what does that teach you? Time is irrelevant. Gang stalking. No matter where you are, what you're doing, if you think you're alone, if you think you're being chased in a forest by, you know, Freddy Krueger, it doesn't matter. You have at least 5,000 other people that know exactly where you are and you're always safe. Not only in the physical world, but also in your angelic spirit team. So what does that teach you? The advanced destructive habits. How to utilize that power of destruction to create. You have the destructive habits, now you know how to heal them and other people. Now you know the full extent of a full al you know, alcoholic or a full cigarette smoker or a full sugar addict or whatever. Amplified destructive habits shows you the capacity other people have. Do you see how it's all an aspect of consciousness? Global warming, what does that fucking teach you? How to stop being a messy human. How to take responsibility for what you're doing in life and to the planet. It makes you aware of the planet. Pain and severe discomfort. What does that teach you? How to ease pain in your body quickly, immediately, and without you know massive uses of multiple different drugs. Electronic and energy pollution. What does that teach you? How to be immune to any form of electromagnetic energy or pollution. You are consciousness itself. How could you be polluted by yourself? Increased white blood cell count. What does that teach you? How to harness the blood flow and blood count in your body with your imagination. Red, white, all the different cells and things in your body, they all function off color and they all listen to you. 
So if one's imbalanced, you're going to notice that in your physical body and you're going to counteract it, meaning you're going to learn how to heal. Breaking down the, of the human will, grotesque vivid minds, visual projections. What would that teach you? How to control your mind. Alteration of sugar metabolism in cells. What does that teach you? If your cells start doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. Well, if someone else can make them do that, then can't you make them do it the other way? Inserted insect bug disease, mycoplasma. <clears throat> yeah, Lyme disease and stuff like that. I've had that. I didn't know I had it until I found out that I had it. So, what does that teach you? You don't know you have something until you have it, right? <clears throat> it makes you be more aware of your body or your environment. Overexcitement of the frontal lobes. What does that teach you? How to have more control over the, cor the cortexes of your mind. The left, the right, the inactive parts, the active parts. To use more of it. Do you see how you can look at all of this as beneficial? Like a science test, someone running tests on you. Or you can look at it like your entire life has been a fucking lie. A betrayal, treachery, disease, distortions, lies, deceit, pettiness. Both are true. What do you do with it? That's up to you, isn't it? But if this is happening to you, it's not just you that it's happening to. And you don't have to be a victim to it. There's information out in the world. There's resources out in the world. There are people like me and you out in the world. So... And really think about it this way. The people, the people that are doing this to you, to us, they're just people. They're just people and they're just doing their job. It's literally nothing personal. Doesn't matter if you're a baby or a hundred years old, if you're a fucking <clears throat> monkey being shot into space. It doesn't matter. It's not personal. It's just business. It's just science. So, as angry as that might make you feel, don't fall into it. Use it to your advantage. Do your own research, trust your own instincts, and be aware of your own self. All of this is to bring you back to who you are. That means if you were at a frequency where you manifested this experience or these experiences in your life, there was a reason for it. I experienced these things before I was even able to walk, which means I signed up for this before I was even born, which means there was a reason for all of this and that it wasn't to victimize me for 40, 40 years of my life. So thank you. Now the rest of us and the rest of you. I can't forgive or that won't or whatever. <sighs> My advice to you. Take care of the eyes you see when you look in the mirror. Listen carefully. Look in a mirror. And just buy yourself a little mirror, whatever. And look into your own eyes. There is a psychiatric, psychological thing that happens when you look in your own eyes. Let yourself feel whatever you feel, but look deep in your own eyes as close as you can with the mirror comfortably. So like hold the mirror like really close so that you only see your eyes. Okay? Look deep in your eyes and remember yourself. Remember who you are before your body changed, before you got wrinkles or, you know, your skin tone changed or whatever happened to you. 
before any of it. Your eyes will always be the same, even if the eyelids and the eye shape changes. Your eyes are still your eyes. Look at them. Look at the patterning of your iris. Look at the patterning of your limbal rings. Look at the pattern of your being through your eyes. Notice what's there. Notice what's not supposed to be there. Notice your being. It's very important, and I can't go into detail right now. It's 35 minutes already about why it's important, but just look into your own eyes. There is a mental physical thing that happens that connects the heart. It's like a aspect of hugging a, a family member or like oxytocin being released in the brain. You have to teach yourself how to trust yourself again because it took me years to do that. Years and I'm still working on it. But what helped was looking at my own eyes. Try it. Try it, you'll see. Even if you're fine, even if you don't experience any of this stuff, hold a mirror close to you, like, and really look in your own eyes. My voice changed so much, my body changed so much, I, and I, I spent a lot of time not even recognizing who I was. It was very messed up, but what I, what really helped is seeing my own eyes. It reminded me of me. So. Let that be your anchor. You know how kind of in dreams people have a thing where they like, when they notice it, they become lucid in the dream. Let your own eyes be that anchor for you. Because other things in your reality can be tampered with, but your eyes can't. Your emotions can be. Your mind can be. Your etc. can be. But that void in your eyes, that can't be. That's you in there. So connect with you. Take care of yourself and remember, no matter what they're doing, some part of your consciousness agreed to it. Now we have to move forward in the physical world making different choices and having different beliefs because the belief systems have been hacked, which is creating a self-fulfilling loop of what we're experiencing. So they can't be viewed as enemies. They can't be viewed as perpetrators. They can't be viewed as bad or evil or anything. You have to take that power away from them. Okay? They're not doing this to you. They were doing this for you because you're a powerful being and you wanted to learn your limitations and what you're capable of. They didn't do it to you. They did it for you. Take that power back from them. <clears throat> and don't fight this. If you fight it, you acknowledge it exists. All you have to do is acknowledge it exists and then do something that completely dismisses its existence. We know this happened. We know. You don't have to go around the world telling everybody that what you went through because you'll end up recreating it. So let this be your video where you put this to rest. This happened to you. It happened to me. If it didn't happen to you, it happened to someone you know. Now, we leave it be. And we live a better life. We scatter that frequency of creating what we created for ourselves. We take the power back from them. We did this to ourselves. We take all the negative effects away. We can restore the body. It's fine. Thank you for showing us what you showed us. Now we're going to go get some coffee. We're going to have a good time. And blah, 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 right? Whatever you're going to do. So be more intelligent and use consciousness differently than you did before.
change your habits, change your belief systems, change your programming. And don't, don't, don't fight anybody. Don't blame anybody and make nobody the enemy. Nobody, not even evil itself. It is just doing a job. Take all of that power back. Take the power back from evil itself. It was just a butter knife. It was just a butter knife cutting butter. The butter knife is not evil to the butter. It is just cutting the butter. Take your power back. <laughs>